In the previous section, you've done a lot of work with the controller tier by incorporating login and sessions. Let's switch focus to the view. So far, we've been using JSPs to render our views in the chocolate store application. While JSP is one of the popular view technologies, there are other options as well. In this tutorial, you will learn how to integrate with FreeMarker, a popular templating framework for Java web applications. When we created a blank Spring MVC application in section one, we inherited a lot of Spring configuration from the defaults. The defaults happen to work well out of the box with JSPs as a choice of view technology. But Spring MVC has support for a whole lot of other view technologies, including templating frameworks like Timeleaf, Velocity, and FreeMarker. In this video, you will publish a URL that shows a list of products in the store with the view generated not by JSP, but by a FreeMarker FTL file. Before we implement FreeMarker support, let's look at how the views currently work in our Spring MVC application. You have so far seen two ways to return a view from any controller method. You can either return the string containing the JSP name that then gets mapped to a complete JSP file name and rendered, or you can return a model and view instance that contains information about the view, which is then rendered. The framework, however, in order to generate a view needs an instance of a class called view that comes with Spring MVC. So if your controller method returns a view or a model and view, the framework knows what to render. But if the controller method returns a string, the framework needs to get a view instance from that string. This step of resolving a view that needs to be rendered is done by what are called view resolvers. View resolvers are configured as beans in the Spring application context. They contain a method that take in a string view name and return a view instance. Open the servlet context XML and look at the internal view resolver bean definition. This is a view resolver that came out of the box with the Spring MVC project template that we used. This view resolver maps a string to a JSP name and it returns an instance of the view. Notice that this view resolver always maps to a JSP file. This will not work for us now because our goal is to create an FTL file and render the view instead of JSP. The solution is to use another view resolver that comes with Spring specifically for FreeMarker called FreeMarker View Resolver. Spring provides other view resolvers for Velocity and other technologies, and I encourage you to look up the documentation for more info about them. But the underlying concept is similar. Create a new definition of the FreeMarker view resolver. This view resolver requires that you define an extra configuration bean. So create a bean of type FreeMarker configurer. One configuration value that you need to set is the template loader path property which is the location of the FTL files. Enter the value as webinf slash views slash FTL, which is where you'll save the FTL file that you'll create shortly. There is one other configuration needed here, but we'll come back to that in a minute. Now it's time to write the controller method. Let's map the URL to slash products question mark FTL and return a list of products rendered in FTL. Open the product controller class and add a new method called getProducts. This method is already mapped to slash products at the class level, so just add the params as FTL in the request mapping annotation. The method uses the product service to get the list of products, sets it in the model, and returns the FTL file name product list. Now on to writing the FTL. Create a new FTL called product list.ftl in webinf slash views slash FTL, which is the location that you've already told the view controller. Here you write standard FTL syntax to loop through the list in the model and display them. Of course, we'll not go into the details about the FTL syntax since that's outside the scope of this course. For this file to be interpreted and rendered as HTML, you will need to include the free marker library in your application. Open the maven pom.xml and add a free marker dependency. Maven will now include all the necessary jars for free marker to work. Now to the final piece of the configuration. Note that we now have two view resolvers defined in our context. One that resolves to JSPs and one that resolves to FTLs. If you look at the controller method, there is no distinction between a JSP name return value and an FTL name return value. 
how does the framework know which view resolver to call? If what you intended to return is a JSP file name and the FTL view resolver picks it up, it'll look for an FTL file with that name and it'll not find it. And the same problem happens if the JSP view resolver tries to find a name you meant to be an FTL file. Multiple view resolvers do work because of the concept called view resolver chaining. Given that you've defined a certain number of view resolvers in the application context, Spring lines them up in an order and checks each one of them if they can successfully resolve a return view string. If they can, that view is rendered. If not, the next view resolver in the chain is checked and so on until it finds one that can resolve to a view. If none of them can, an exception is thrown. You can control the order of this chain by specifying the order property of the view resolver config. Add the order property of one to the free marker view resolver and two for the JSP view resolver. You'll need to be careful about the order because some view resolvers like the internal view resolver throw an exception if it doesn't find a view. So any resolver below it in the chain never gets a chance. So there are some view resolvers like this that do not play nice with the chaining concept. So obviously such resolvers should be placed at the bottom of the chain like you've done here. That's it, deploy and run the application. The earlier views work fine as usual because the FTL view resolver doesn't find the FTL files for the result. And so the responsibility goes to the internal view resolver to find the JSP files. However, when you access our new handler method that returns a name that's available as an FTL file, the FTL file is rendered as expected. In this video, you have learned about view resolvers and how to chain them. You've also implemented free marker view technology in a Spring MVC application.